Hell, so I'm here with a review video. Um, I just thought uh, about doing a new format with my videos. Um, continue to do um, weekly haul videos, and then towards the end of the week, spend time make another video where I spend most of my time reviewing one of the things that I read. Most of that will be books that I liked, like. It'll pretty much be my favorite book of the week, or something that I want to basically advertise, hope that other people pick up, um, and then I'll quickly run through the other things that I read for the week. Um, yeah, so I'm going to start out with the quick reviews. Um, first I read Aliens Defiance, which, um, issue number seven, which I picked up on recommendation by Neil Swanee. Um, he said that this, in one of his videos, he said that um, this issue was a standalone story and he ranted and raved about how good the story has been, uh, mostly because of the character development. So I read this. It is a contained story. Um, the, the, there's three main characters in this, at least this issue. Um, the Doctor, um, the, I'm pretty sure, Soldier and then a android um, and the story goes, the doctor is infected with an alien um, and she has decided that they need to extract it and contain it and preserve it so that, keep it alive um, but contain it so that they can study it um, yeah, for so they can study it um, so this story is them extracting the alien, keeping it alive, and containing it. Um, the characters, the emotion, really come through. Um, and the image and the process of the extraction of the alien um, was very nice to see beautiful beautiful emotions, beautiful characters, beautiful nasty <laughs> subject matter. Uh, it's written by Brian Wood, art by Stephen Thompson, which again, um, well not again, but um, I really enjoyed the art in this. Um, real thin lines. And then the color is by Dan Jackson. Alright, so next I've read Batgirl and the Birds of Prey. Um, this has been my least favorite issue of this series. This is number five. Um, it's written by um, Julie Benson and Shauna Benson. And the art in this issue is by Rogue Antonio. Um, he's done one other and all, and I think the other four or five um, were done by um, Claire Rose, who I've I prefer her artwork. Um, uh, Rogue Antonio attempts to mimic her her wacky facial expressions and um, and um, there was this thing in the middle of the book which I promptly removed because it's stupid um, so the reason I did not like this issue so much was partially because the artist um, it's good art but um, I'm here for Claire Rose art and then um, I did not like this. So this issue is, for the most part, a origin story for the new Oracle. This character, which there's a flashback of him young. This is him now. Um, I just found him to be annoying. Um, he's a fanboy of um, Batgirl, and he's innocent, naive but a hacker um, 
and I found the jokes to be, I don't know, they've always been fairly campy, um, but in this issue, I just found them, found them to be, um, yeah, I guess too campy or too light, um, yeah, enough time on that. Then I read Motor Girl issue number two, um, which I enjoyed. Um, it's written and drawn by Terry Moore. I think this is the first Terry Moore I've I've read, um, besides a few random issues of Rachel Rising, um, which I love the style and the concepts going on in that book. Um, so in this book, um, we have this main character, um, I'm forgetting her name at this point, but she's a, um, a war vet, um, and in this issue we find out her dad was as well. Um, she has some hallucinations including this gorilla and possibly these aliens who have been crashing near her and asking for her help to fix their their ships um, so I, I'm getting the feeling that this this book is largely about um, the main character's trauma um, both with her dad and um, it looks like she has some scars on her back, which we see in the early part of this issue here. So, probably from war as well. Um, there's also some powerful people trying to buy the land that her landlord, this woman, owns. Um, So there's some something real going on. Yeah, I'm definitely unsure about this. I did, like I said, I enjoyed it. Um, yeah, so we'll see. I'll probably read a few more, but I'm not gonna put it on my pull list yet. So then I read Angel City, issue number three, which is written by Janet Harvey, um, with art by Megan Levins, and um, colors by Nick Filardi. So this is a um, somewhat cartoony crime noir, um, not just because of Megan Levins' um, artwork, Megan Levine's, artwork, um, which is very cartoony, um, but also I find something about the, uh, the feel of it, there's a, there's a lightness to it, even though it's a murder mystery, um, so in the first issue, um, this woman, Dolores, um, her friend, her mostly ex-friend, um, was murdered and she looks almost exactly like her. Um, her friend was involved with Hollywood. Um, I think an actress or trying to be an actress. Um, and so in the background there are there's movie power as well as um, some mob influence um, going on. We don't quite know exactly what's going on, except that some mobs moving in, some mafias moving into town, and um, basically trying to take control. Trying to take control of, um, I think, gambling, which is what they see as being the most lucrative. Um, we st unless I'm missing something, we still don't have any idea of. who the murderer is, um, but our main character, Dolores, um, she, she's learned about, um, about Hollywood, 
power using um, women as high class um, call girls um, and she poses as one one night um, in this issue and so she's trying to get closer trying to find out information and she basically she keeps getting a little too close and things keep happening um, but the story isn't necessarily developing we're seeing we're getting introduced to people who may be part of the mystery alright I really like this series um, issue number three I'm not sure how many it goes um, I'm assuming it's uh, limited but um, but the way the story's unfolding, it seems like it, it will need uh, a few a good amount more issues. All right, so finally, and the my favorite book of this week was May Day, issue number two. And I strongly recommend it. Um, it's a two of five. It's going to be a five-issue miniseries um, with these two characters, Felix and Rose. This is issue two. I actually want to open up issue one first um, and talk about the overall story. So, these two Soviet spies, um, probably early 20s, late teens, probably early 20s, um, Felix and Rose, um, they, they're in the United States. Um, and they, their job is to kidnap this guy, um, whose name is extremely hard to say. Oh, no, wait. Uh, General Ivan Ivanovich Yerzhovsky. And I guess he's, um, his encrypted name is C.K. Grouper, Kugrouper. Um, but anyway, he has, um, he's a Soviet, um, if I've been saying Russian, I mean Soviet, um, cause it's the seventies. Um, he is a Soviet, um, general who has information and has been feeding information to, um, the United States. Um, he has just contacted the United States, contacted Langley, I'm not sure if that's, okay, I think it's FBI or CIA, um, but he has a list of all the, um, people who are Russian, or Soviet spies in the United States, and he's in a safe house, waiting to get picked up, waiting to give that information to the CIA. Um, the two main characters in the first issue kidnap him, we meet them, we get a little bit of development on their attitudes, the way they think, their brutality, um, in that, in the way that they think, and they decide to, um, since they're in the United States, uh, have a little fun. They run into some hippies. And they go off into the desert and have a night with them. Drinking psychedelics. It, this issue ends with them being caught by the CAA and the hippies that they were with who ran off and stole their car. Um, get caught with the general in their trunk. So the second, so this issue was fairly slow with a fast, crazy psychedelic scene. Um, I guess it wasn't crazy slow, but there was a lot of it was dense. There's a lot of information, um, a lot of new characters, a lot of um, spy talk, which took a little getting used to. Um, but it was dense. It was a real dense issue. All right, so this is issue number two. Um, came out this week. I don't think I said um, the writers or artists. It's written by Alex DeCampi. 
um, art by Tony Parker and colors by Blonde. Um, so this issue um, falls into what I can best describe as like punk rock or real fast metal. Um, the Felix and Rose have been caught by the CIA and or the, the United States um, and this guy Stomparelli and his goons are trying to get Felix to take them to where they've hidden um, the general's bag which contains the the double agents the list of double agents um, Felix crosses them and creates a pretty amazing action sequence. This panel is beautiful. And yeah, then they Sorry, I did not say that I'll be doing spoilers. I'll try to make that explicit in the writing of, in the text of the video, maybe in the title. Um, but they get away. Felix and Rose get away through this, uh, through the course of this issue, which is, for the most part, again, an action scene. Um, it's brutal. feels like falling the whole issue um, and then so they're left so this in issue ends with them um, on their own with a car um, a little bit of danger bodily danger and um, without the general's body, who, he's still alive, they, they tranquilized him, um, without the body, and I'm pretty sh and I'm not sure if they have the, his bag, which contains the code names, so they are pretty much fucked, um, and so is the CIA, because they lost their, they lost their, uh, They've lost everything. I'm pretty sure the CIA has the body, at least. Um, or the general. But yeah, super excited about the series. Please pick it up. Um, Alex Campy has talked about how she would like to do a series of short stories with these uh, Felix and Rose characters. Um, and I would love to see more of them. Um, yeah, she's she's pretty great. Um, she she writes at the end in the notes. Um, she talks about she always talks about um, directors um, and films that she's a fan of. Um, she talks about in this one um, Michelangelo Antonioni, who I do not know, but I guess I'm pretty sure he did a movie called The Passenger, 1975. Um, she says, I adore my memories of Antonioni. The actual process of watching his films can irritate me intensely, but looking back afterwards through the filter of what was retained, some of my favorite memories in the film in film have been his. Um, I find that with her books, I have similar experiences. She also writes um, No Mercy, um, she writes I don't know what else she's writing right now um, she just came out with a, she just did a Kickstarter for a series a Dark Horse uh, presents series called um, semi semi auto magic um, she's also done a book called um, smoke mirrors and then also uh, 
Archie vs. Predator, and she did, I think, 18 issues of a series, a Dark Horse series called um, Grindhouse, which were all two two issue short stories um, that were super campy horror, Grindhouse type, type books. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm a bit of a fanboy of Alex the Campy. Um, but yeah, I liked reading that in the back. It talked about um, the experience because I, I, yeah, like I said, um, a lot of her books they tend to stay with me or unfold extremely slowly. Um, but the content is dense, and her research is dense. Um, so yeah, like she says, the 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 experience of. Uh, or like she says about Antonioni's movies, the experience of reading her books, um, I feel is also not the most enjoyable. There are moments of like dark, dark humor, which, which is poignant having to do with, I don't know, things in our society or, um, just things in general, uh, things in general, like that's everything. Um, but yeah, I find her stuff to be, um, yeah, really solid. Anyway, I'm rambling on, running out of things to say. If you watch this, thank you very much. Um, yeah, hope you've enjoyed your books. Hope you're having a great, uh, crazy holiday season. All right, take it easy.